It's Wednesday, which means it's time for a first look, and we start with a promoted tweet that popped up on my feed from Mean Finance, and it said, you can DCA into hoodie. Lot to unpack here, and we will do after these messages from our sponsors. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. A balance of the gas-optimized vault architecture makes trading cheaper than anywhere else. Liquidity providers can optimize their fee earnings using the dynamic fee system that automatically adjusts to market conditions. You can also use asset managers to lend out idle assets, dramatically increasing your capital efficiency. And because Balancer is an open platform for flexible, automated markets, you can choose from stable pools or weighted pools, and in the future, more designs will be created that we don't even know about yet. Check it out at balancer.fi. Now, you shouldn't have to compromise your privacy to participate in DeFi. With Offshift, you won't have to. Offshift is pioneering private decentralized finance, or PriFi, with the world's first platform for private, on-chain derivatives and financial applications. Take back control of your privacy and become a PriFi pioneer today. Learn more about what they're building and read the yellow paper at offshift.io, coming Q1 2022. Now, back to our scheduled program. Okay, so what does this mean, DCA? It's dollar cost averaging. And what that basically means is that it's very difficult to time the market. And if you want to get the best overall average price on an asset over time, then you dollar cost average. So if the market goes down, you buy a little bit more. If the market goes up, well, maybe you don't buy so much, but you might, over the course of 30 days, end up with a pretty decent average price rather than buying everything that you want in one go. And this works well if you're looking to bet in a long-term position. For instance, if you're looking to go long on Ethereum, then you might not just buy 300 ETH today, but you might say, okay, over the course of the next 30 days, the market's likely to go up and likely to go down. And if I take advantage of the days when it's down and don't overpay there, then that'll balance out the days when I might overpay. Uh, see where I'm going with this? That's dollar cost averaging. It's a very powerful strategy for crypto, particularly because the market is so volatile. It's extremely difficult to time the market in any meaningful way, unless you're extremely lucky or you spend your entire day glued to the charts. And because it's a 24-hour market, that's kind of impossible. So this tweet is referencing Hoodie, which is the fractionalized share of a crypto punk owned by DZ. So DZ has fractionalized this punk. There are 10,000 hoodie tokens that represent ownership of that hoodie. Now, as we know now, crypto punks are incredibly valuable. You and I probably can't afford a crypto punk, but we can afford a piece of a crypto punk, and that's what these tokens represent. So if you want to gain exposure to hoodie, which is this token that represents this punk, which if we think about where this is going, might end up being extremely valuable, then um, you might want to dollar cost average in because what tends to happen with sort of smaller shit coins, as we say, is they're extremely volatile. And so there might be moments where they just plummet in value and you can take advantage of that if you're um, set up correctly. Now, what you would normally do with dollar cost averaging is you would check back daily or keep a, a close eye on the charts and... Uh, buy and, and buy pieces when you think the market is right. Mean finance allows you to do all of that automatically. That's basically what it's about. So what it'll ask you to do is say, what pair do you want to dollar cost average into? So for instance, you have ETH and you want to buy DAI, or you have DAI more likely and you want to buy ETH, uh, or you have USDC and you want to buy ETH, then you can set it up so that you will buy a certain amount, either daily, weekly, or monthly, for a certain number of days. So you could do it for five days, 15 days, 30 days, or in an, an entire year. And the protocol will automatically buy for you at a price that's determined on the day uh, over the course of the period that you have set up. And that's called taking a position. Now, what's so powerful about this is you don't pay gas. So what happens is you interact with the protocol, which is a transaction, and you will pay gas at that point, but all the swaps that happen over the course of your position, you don't pay gas on. What you do pay is a fee, which is 0.6%, and that fee is split between the protocol itself and the people who actually execute the swaps. Follow so far? So this is what the dashboard looks like. It's pretty simple. You have, let's say, for instance, we wanted to swap USDC. It would read what's in my wallet at the current point. I don't have very much, but uh, I could go and get some USDC and then we could start setting up this position. And then I could say, I want to swap it for wrapped ETH. I don't actually know if you can swap directly to ETH. I suspect probably not. 
The reason for that is that, uh, can we? No. The reason for that is that ETH itself is not an ERC-20 token. Bet you didn't know that, but it isn't. Uh, wrapped ETH, of course, is, and it's very easy to swap between ETH and wrapped ETH. Uh, so USDC to wrapped ETH, we could say, I want to do it daily for 30 days. I could also set up a custom position if I wanted to, uh, but I don't. And that's basically it. Um, so I could say, yeah, I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to do, what I've just done there. But that's it. Then we'd have to approve the USTC. We're used to this. Uh, I don't actually know how much that would cost. Let's just have a look. Uh, 10 bucks. Okay, I'm not going to do that. To approve the USTC. And then the protocol will just take care of it for you. That's it. You just walk away and it does it. Now, obviously what you're thinking here is, well, how do they figure out the price? So you can go onto the mean finance documentation and there's a decent amount of documentation here. I would like to see a bit more uh, information fleshed out, particularly on the swapping section, but we'll get to that in a second. But if we go down to the price oracle, they're using the time-weighted average price from Uniswap's V3 pool oracles. Now, of course, these swaps are being um, done using Mean Finance's own liquidity pools. They're not being done on Uniswap, uh, but they're using the same time-weighted average price oracles. So the price on Uniswap should be the same as the price as it is on Mean Finance, more or less. But if it isn't, obviously that's an arbitrage opportunity. And of course, as we know, uh, those who understand how to quickly move funds from one place to another, particularly using flash loans, could take advantage of an arbitrage between Mean Finance's pool and the Uniswap one. Um, there's this opportunity everywhere if you know where to look. Um, but if you trust Uniswap and you trust their oracles, which I think most people probably do, then that is where they're getting the price from. Token integration, well, when I looked, I couldn't actually find Hoodie. Uh, doesn't mean that it's not there, but it wasn't immediately obvious where it was from. I mean, you've, you've got a bunch of fairly familiar tokens here uh, as you scroll down the list. But there are some question marks around some of them, and I suspect um, it might be difficult to set up pairs, um, some of the more unusual pairs. And there's a, there's a kind of funny uh, item down here, which is what happens when your position goes stale. So um, stale positions are those where nobody's interested in executing the swap. Um, what the protocol asks swappers to do is execute a swap for you in return for fees. But if they don't care and they're not interested, then they won't, then your swap on a day, if you're putting in daily positions, a dollar cost average into something that's not particularly, um, that doesn't have high liquidity, then you might find that your position goes stale and then it will be wrapped up. So um, that's what stale means. So I think for the moment, it would be probably wise to use this protocol for you know, fairly major token swaps. Um, something like, for instance, BAT or Nexo or you know, DAI to, to ETH seems like a fairly sensible one, USTC to uh, something like that. So, and it only works on the SC20 tokens. Obviously at the moment, I don't know if there's any plans to make a cross-chain version of this. I think that could be kind of interesting, but I can also imagine it would get extremely complicated and probably isn't worth the hassle. Um, so, if we take a look at the swap side of this, uh, what, basically how it works is swaps go into a pool and they're executed as a batch. So you have, for instance, a DAI to ETH pair. So you want to swap DAI to ETH, but there might also be people that want to go the other way, that want to go from ETH to DAI. All of those are processed at the same time as a batch, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get exactly the same amount of ETH wanting to travel one way and then exactly the same amount of DAI wanting to travel the other way. So for swappers, they're going to have to balance out that pool. And to do that, they can borrow funds from the protocol itself in a flash loan and then pay them back immediately to execute the swap and take the fees for doing so. So you have flash swaps that you can execute in there. This is pretty high level stuff, but that's effectively what's going on here. And as we know from DeFi, the incentives have been balanced to make sure that a swap is the best outcome for those who are executing swaps. So I'm presuming that they've done the maths to make it make sense. 0.6% um, on a swap, 
If you're not paying gas fees over the course of a long period of swaps, over say a year, that seems a pretty good deal to me. Uh, so I'm pretty interested to see how you might use this for treasury management, for instance. And I, I've been tweeting about treasury management this uh, today, in fact, for PFP projects who've raised a lot of money and are looking to buy land and buy, 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 buy. But you've got to think about what happens when the market turns backwards, when it starts going south and everyone's running for the hills. How will you continue funding development over three years of a bear market? Dollar cost averaging is going to be your friend. Treasury management is going to be your friend. So I highly recommend protocols to look into something like this. One flag to raise, these contracts have not been audited yet. Use at your own risk. You have been warned. So that was mean finance. Definitely worth taking a look at. I think it's a very interesting uh, automated way of DCA, which is a powerful strategy in crypto. Uh, that's it for today's first look. If you have a suggestion for us, drop it in the comments below. And I would urge you to subscribe, to hit the like button if you liked it. If you didn't like it, well, then that's on you. And get notifications so you know exactly when a video drops. We are on our way to 100K subscribers. We're going to get there by Christmas. That's a promise. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.